12, 2, verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. It is time to spread the undiluted gospel to the dying world. An expository moment wrapped up with the power of the Holy Ghost. This is Pure Gospel Moment with Mac Miracle. Guest set for an encounter with the God who changes identity. Power to become the best of you. Every human has their best state and their mediocre state. So you choose what state you are existing upon now. But I want to let you know and I'm assuring you that there is a best of your version. That is the best of what you think you are now. That is the best of the human nature in you. The, the spirit of God in you. That is the best you can bring it out. That is the essence of today's teaching. Power, therefore, in the Bible has deeper meaning than what we can imagine. It means some inner strength that does not depend on outer things. Power to become the best of you. And I say power means some inner strength that does not depend on outward things. Some inner strength that does not what? Depend on outer things. And as we study this evening, God will bring out that inner strength in you that will bring out the better version of you in the name of Jesus. Who wants to become a better, better version of him or herself? Me too, I want to become a better version of me. He said, the light will shine brighter and brighter unto the what? Perfect day. Which means we keep on working on ourselves until we become better. And I decree someone here will become better by the time we live here in the name of Jesus. So power to become. Becoming means to pass from one state to another. To metamorphosize from a state to another. To enter into some state or condition by a change from another state or condition. So you have to consciously push yourself from a state that you are in to a better state. But you need an effort. That's why I said power to become. The power is residual in you. And until you bring it out, nothing changes. And I see that power coming out of you now this evening in Jesus' name. I know, I believe you can change to a better version of you. Do you know why? Because the scripture makes me to understand in the book of Philippians 4 verse 13. And it says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. I can do all things. So let me paraphrase. I can become a better version of me through him who gives me strength. I am able to do all things. I am able. I am able. Ability comes from the power that is lying potential in you. You can do something. You have the ability. But that ability won't surface this earth until you bring about the power that God has planted in you. KJV said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And I decree and I pray for someone again that the power lying residue in you will come alive this evening in the name of Jesus and make you a better version of you in Jesus' name. Wouldn't you be happy somebody look at you and say, this is not the person I used to know. You get back to school and say, this is not the person that left this class by the time this school closed. And that will be the testimony of someone. And I want to be talking on three steps to bring about the better version of you. There are three steps to becoming the best of you. Number one, look to God. Number two, look within. Number three, look forward. Number one, I said what? Look to God. Number two, you look within you after looking to God. And number three, after looking within you, do what? You look forward. I'm going to be explaining these three steps. Number one, look to God. How do I become a better version of me? By looking to the one who made me. By going back to the source, the one who made me. Look what? To God. Look what? 
to God. And God is in you. Do you know that God is in you? Do you know that God is in you? Have you heard the scripture say, you are God? You know you are God. Okay, do you know you are Christ? That is where the confusion is. And people fight this sermon. Jesus said, I and my father are one. But you believe that you are God and you are scared to say you are Christ. His nature is in you. He said, I and my father are one. As he has chosen me, I have also chosen you. So, if you are God, you are like God, you are like Christ. I'm going to take you deep into a subject matter I prepared for a seminar, but let me open up your eyes to something. In the book of Genesis, how you know that you can become a better version of you. And God created him, male and female. What did he say? He created he, them, male and female. Then after that, verse 2, and God formed man from the dust. Which means there are two versions of man here we are talking about. The created man and the formed man. The created man is the inner man. And the formed man is the outer man. Is somebody following me now? This is a teaching church. Everyone open up your eyes to what I'm telling you. This is a secret that if you understand this secret, you can command anything. You can pray in the name of Jesus today and to answer. So just follow me. You have the created man and you have the what? The formed man. And I said the created man is the inner man. And the formed man is what? The outer man. So in the book of Genesis chapter 1, chapter 1, verse 27. So God created human beings in what? In his own image. So God created human beings what? In his own image. Have you seen God? Have you seen your spirit? You have not seen your spirit. You have not seen God. So your spirit is the image of God. That is the image God created. So God created man in his own image. Somebody will say, I have two legs. God has two legs. No, we don't know yet because we haven't seen him. Say, no one has seen God. No one has gone to heaven apart from the one who descended from heaven, which is Jesus Christ. Follow this teaching. You will learn how to command things as Christ and it will come to pass. That is how to become a better version of the God of you. Of what God made. So God created man in his own image. The man he created is not the physical thing you have seen. It's the spirit. That spirit. That's the spirit of man that we don't see. God is spirit. Remember. And they that worship him. Must worship him in spirit. That image he created. Is what you worship him with. Are you following me now? So what he created. Was the spirit. In Genesis chapter 1. So chapter 2 verse 7. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust. The forming of the man is skin you are seeing. Are you following me now? That is this skin, the body you are seeing. So this body is the formed man. The spirit in us is the created man. Is somebody understanding that part now? So when they say, I am the image of God, say, ye are God. He's talking about that spirit. Is somebody following up to this part now? Am I wasting my time? Somebody is so hungry that they are not understanding this teaching. He created man. And when Jesus came, there is a remarkable statement. He said, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new formed man. Did he say he's a new formed man? He said he's a new creature. Why did he say he's a new creature? Because when Jesus comes into you, it is that same spirit that has been renewed. Not the body, not the mind. Your mind, what happens to your mind is what you permit your soul to think about. Follow me, don't get confused. Don't get confused. I want to show you how to become a better form of you. When they say, you are God, you are God, you don't understand. When you understand this teaching, you will not go about beg any mortal man. You will meet down and pray. God, I need money. He will send it. God, I need this. I am telling you what I practice. Forget the fact that you think you are young, you are too small. I have been praying, not happen. Open your, if you can open your eyes to this, you will operate as a God. Say, if any man be in Christ, what happens? He is a new creature. Now, what did I say is the created man? Is the spirit. 
Which means when you accept Christ, is the spirit that has been regenerated, that has been recreated. Remember Nicodemus went to Jesus at night and said, you must be born again. And he told Jesus, how can a full-fledged man like me be born again? He was thinking God, Jesus was talking about a formed man. Why Jesus was talking about the created man, the spirit. Are you understanding me now? So the formed man can't be born again. It is the created man that can be that can be born again because that created man is the spirit, is the image of God. Now look at what happened when Satan came and tempted Abraham, uh, Adam. Pardon me. And Adam fell. He said, "If you eat of this fruit, you will die." God was speaking to God. He was speaking to spirits. That thing that died was not the formed man. It was a spirit that died. The created man. Are you following me now? The created man died at the garden of Eden. Adam gave up the spirit of God in him. Adam did what? Died. He died. But people are looking at the physical, the formed man. They don't understand. What kills the formed man is when you want it, when you deny the formed man the food it needs, the plants, the medicine. Adam did not violate all those things. It was disobedient to the creator. And the creator told the created man, you are dead by eating this. The spirit died. And man was living in utter darkness. Sin. But God said, I need to bring this fellowship back. The fellowship God was talking about was not the human. It was not the front plan. The spirit. Because they that worship him must do what? Worship him in spirit and in truth. The spirit is the created man that worships God. This is how to become the better form version of you. If you have this mentality, if you have this mentality, nobody can joke with your spirit life. Nobody can tell with you. Understand this. When you enter the place of prayer, you will beat your chest. I am a God. I have commanded this. And as Christ, it must come to pass. Understand this mystery. If you can understand it, I will be very satisfied. Now listen to me now. In biology, remember the created man and the formed man. Is somebody following me? Remember biology. They will tell you that man has central nervous system. Man has spirit, soul and body. In religion, they will tell you man has spirit, soul and body. But in biology, integrated science, they will teach you a bit of biology. When you enter biology, they go deep. When you now enter so, uh, what do you now call this deep medicine and all this all this stuff? They will now go deep into it. They say human is in this part, is in this part, is in this part. Now, human being has three parts: the spirit, the soul, and the body. What happens to the body is determined by the soul. So the mind, feel and emotion, your mind, your will, and emotion. Let me use an example. Imagine one person is here, another person is here, and this person is here. This is the body. Can three persons come? Come, God we come. Deborah, come. I want to understand. If only a few of you will understand this, you will be ready to fight the battle we want to fight on Sunday. I want to teach you. So when you come on Sunday, you command things. Now, this is, come, shift out. This is the spirit so, this is the spirit, soul, and body. This is what we see, the body, the created, the formed man. This is the created man. So for this man to function where there is somebody in between that interprets to this person. When I touch this person, he feels, it's through the souls, the mind, will, and emotion. Are you understanding me now? This body has spirit, soul, and body. Then this soul has will, Mind and emotion. Three, God has Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do you understand me? Follow me now. Now, this body cannot do anything until the soul interprets it. That's what you call mind. That's what the biology will say, brain. When I touch him, he felt that someone touched him. If he wants to hit me back, it's the soul that will interpret it to him. His mind, will, and emotion. The emotion will say, it's too hard. The emotion will be angry. Hit back. Do you understand me? Then the spirit will be battling with the emotion. The interpret what God is telling me to do is against what the word 
is telling the body to do. So this soul is battling either to feed this spirit man or either to feed this man. So in the case of Adam, this soul had to feed this man, feed this man to eat the apple and this died. God forbid not you, the spirit did what? Died. Because the soul, the emotion was like that. We say, touch this fruit. It's sweet. Eat the fruit. So the emotion was like, let me listen and eat. It obeyed him. It obeyed the body. So the spirit died. Just go back now. What am I trying to explain to you in essence? That when Jesus came, I'm not landed yet. When Jesus came to save man, he did not need to go to the body. He did not need to go to the soul. He needed to go to the spirit. And it's only one thing that has these three things. Body, soul, and spirit. It's only human being that have it. And Jesus cannot save us until he comes as a human being to have the same three things. So that his spirit, when the body goes back, he said he will send the comforter. The spirit will replace the spirit that died. Is somebody following me now? Follow this teaching. Jesus needed to come back to save this man. Because what the spirit did, what the soul interpreted to the body, made God to remove the spirit from man. And man was moving as soul and body. Even though they say we had spirit. The spirit then is, has its utter doom. Because it sinned. So Jesus needed to come to save man. But he can't save the formed man until he has saved the created man. That is why I say if you are in Christ, you are a new creature, not a new formed man. He's talking about the creation, the created man, the Genesis chapter 1. I, I wonder to ask, why did that scripture say you are now a new creature? Why did he not say you are now a new formed man? You are reformed. You are regenerated. He said new creature because the created man is the spirit. So after Jesus did this, what Jesus did was not that he renewed your spirit. No. He did not renew your spirit. He did not refurbish your spirit. He did not forgive your spirit. It not only forgive, he replaced it with a totally new spirit. He said, I am in you just like I am in my father. If I am my father, I want, then two of us are what? One. So his spirit now does what? Dwells in you. So you have God the father, God the son, and God the Holy Spirit. Just like you have your spirit, so and body. Then when they say we dwell in heavenly places, it's not that you are dwelling on heaven already. The spirit of God is back alive in you. Do you understand that now? So when you pray, be conscious that the spirit of Christ is what? Alive in you. That the spirit of what? Christ is what? Alive in you. That the spirit of what? Christ is alive in you. The book of Romans chapter 10 verse 9 to 10 says, Because if thou shalt confess with thy mouth Jesus as Lord and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from dead, thou shalt be saved. For with thy mouth man believeth unto righteousness and with thy mouth confession is made unto salvation. So when you confess unto salvation, what happened? Jesus takes place, takes dominance in you. Now, take a look at this. John chapter 15, verse 16. John chapter 15, verse 16. This is where I want to drive you to now. To know that you have power to ask. You have power to command anything and that it obeys. You have not chosen me. The book of John chapter 15, verse 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. That you should go bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he will give you. Whatsoever you ask the Father in my name. So when you understand the person that dwells in you and you ask in that authority, you become a better version of you. You don't become a beggarly Christian. You don't become a Christian that every time you're asking who will do this for me, who will not do this for me, that when you ask, you just believe. You shut your mind and say, this thing has been done. This thing is settled and so shall it be. If you understand that Christ is this, this spirit of, let me tell you, if you accept Jesus, it is not your spirit 
that is alive in you is the spirit of Christ that is in you. It is in you. That's why when you ask God, do this for me in the name of so the Christ who is my Lord, who is the landlord, the one who owns the house you are staying, who is the owner of this body, who dictates to the soul how I live because without the spirit, the soul and the body is useless. He is the Lord over these things. So God, do this in his name because he's dwelling in me. Is somebody understanding me now? When you have this understanding, you can't behave like a Christian who is beggarly. You can't. You can't behave. I see Satan is tormenting you. Satan is doing this. You just, no, no. You have that authority. And atony, you have that power of atony over him. You know that this spirit that is in me is one. is Christ. And no two spirit can do any two bodies. So have that understanding. Do what? Have that understanding. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17 says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is what? Take the helmet of salvation. You are saved now. Jesus is in you. I say, take the sword of the spirit. The battle we fight is not of the flesh. It's not of canon battles. This is what? Of the spirit. And the sword of the spirit is what? The word of God. And I told you here one day, the body feeds on fruits, feeds on food for it to survive. The soul feeds on what is watched, what it sees, what it thinks of. That's what the soul thinks of, uh, survives on. Then the spirit feeds on the word of God. Many of us, we are starving the spirit man in us. If you understand this teaching, you will not joke with Bible. Because you know that there is one in you who is you we are starving. The spirit of Christ in you. So when you understand that the spirit in you is not just your human spirit, you feed that spirit the food it needs. So that when battles of life come, that is not your spirit that is fighting. He said, Jesus, I've been feeding the spirit of Christ in me. Oh yeah, go and face this. How does he face the battle? How does he answer when of Jesus when you don't feed it the word of God? You don't become a better version of you when you don't look up to God. So the maker of man is what? God. He created you. What you do is do what? Look back to him. Did somebody understand anything in that teaching? Look what? To God. Psalm 37, 4 to 5 says, Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desire of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord. Commit your ways to the Lord. I pray the Holy Spirit opens your eyes to show you that the spirit in you is not just your human spirit, but the spirit of Christ. When you see that it is the spirit of Christ in you, then you will have to commit your ways to the Lord. Don't ever take a step of destiny without inquiring from God. Because now his spirit dwells in you. Thinking you can achieve greatness without God is only fooling yourself. Never ever believe that you can become anything in life, career and business through the help of humans. How can human beings help you? They can't. God can pass through human and help you. But you can't go through human to get help from God. God can pass through humans to help you, but you can't go through humans to get help from God. Number two, I said look within. After looking to God, what next do you do? Look within. The ones you are looking up to for help are also looking up to someone else for help. So it's better you look within you. Philippians 4 13 says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Who gives you strength? The spirit of Christ in you. The spirit of Jesus Christ in me gives me strength. I can do all things. Jesus, when he was on earth, said, greater things you will do. He knew that his spirit will be with us when he lives. He said, I will send you a comforter. The comforter he's talking about was the Holy Spirit. And that spirit and Christ are one. So look within you because you can do what you are looking at others doing. That thing you are seeing this man is doing, you can do it. I'm telling you, you can do it. 
You can do it. Somebody say I can do it. Say I can do it. Don't ever get to a point where you look down on yourself. Say this one achieves this. This one did this one. How about me? Don't look down on yourself. You are looking down. Some of us, the spirit of God in us, this is how we do him. We chain his hands, chain his leg and just keep him hidden inside us. Because of how we are thinking. But when you behave like you know who is in you, you take step. When you take both steps, the one in you will come alive to defend that step. So look within you. The greatest men in the world are those who discover the powers within them and utilize it. What did I say? The greatest men in the world are those who discovered the powers within them and did what? Utilized the power. Great woman, you can do greater things than you have done already. Young man, young woman, those listening to this message online and offline, you can do more than you have done already. Because there is a power untapped in you. And until you go within you to fetch from the spirit of God in you, so that I can do all things. Take the whole of you to search within, search within. God did not just create you and throw you down here. He carefully formed you and gave you a solution to the problems of life. Rather than crying about the problems around you, thank God for them and start utilizing the gift of the spirit in you to find solution to them. Rather than crying about one problem or the other, crying about this, anything around you, whether sickness, whether lack, whether poverty, anything that happens to you, happen for you to bring out a better version of you. Am I speaking to somebody now? Anything that happens to you, happen so that you can bring out the better version of you. Poverty came so that you can think and think yourself out of poverty. Sickness came so that you can bring out the power of God within you. And whatsoever you command on earth, what you bind on earth is bound in heaven. What you lose in he- on earth is also lost in heaven. When the spirit of God in you speaks, just because you dwell on the heavenlies, heaven puts stamps on it. Whatever happens to you is happening so that you become better, better. Whether it is bad thing, whether it is good thing, it happened for a reason. And until you bring out that reason, you continually suffer. You continually suffer. You continually ask God, why? 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 Why me? Why me? Why you? So that you will bring out the better version of you. Come on, somebody say, "My the better version of me is coming out. You are not saying it like you are sure. Say, the better version of me is coming out. Stand to your feet and say, the better version of Mac Miracle is coming out. Come on in. The better version of Pastor Mac Miracle is coming out. Say it to yourself. Yes, the better version of you will come out in Jesus' name. Have your seat in God's presence. So the best pastor in the world is your heart. That spirit in you. That is the best pastor. Anything I preach you can decide to do what you want to do through of us. Because you are the final preacher. You are the one that will tell yourself, this thing that pastor said is true. It's time to bring out the spirit of God in me. The best pastor in the world is you. Not any pope, not any bishop, not me. You are the best pastor in the world. So you preach to yourself. Look within and hear the voice of God within you. The best policeman in this world is your conscience. Your conscience is the best policeman. So look with you and live a moral life. Look what? Within you. The best prophet in the world is your instinct. Not any prophet anywhere. Your instinct, the instinct of God is in you. The spirit of God in you is the best prophet in the world. Listen to that spirit of God in you. The best friend you can have in the whole wide world is the book of the law, the Bible. Look within you. You want to become great? You must learn to shut your eyes from others and start looking inside you. Shut your eyes from other families. Uh, this is how their other families are living. My dad, you can't make me feel bad of my own family. I love the way I am. And this is how my friends are my co- Ah, why am I not like that? Shut your eyes and look within, within you, within you. There is a treasure lying on top inside you. There is a treasure inside you. Bring it out. There is a treasure. Finally, look forward. When you look to God, when you look within, what next do you do? 
you look forward. You don't finish, okay, this is the power in me and you sit there. No, look forward. You cannot dominate tomorrow by dwelling on your yesterday. Until you forget the past, you can't get the future. Move away from your past. Move into your future. Stop thinking about what they did to you in the past. Think about how you will correct the errors in the future. Look to God. Look within you and look forward. God told Moses, say, ask the children of Israel, why are they crying to me? Tell them to move forward. There was red sea in front of them. Say, tell them to move forward. In the face of danger, move forward. In the face of fears, move forward. In the face of lack, move forward. In the face of no capital, move forward to propose that business. Until you move forward, the devil will not move backward. Move forward. Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 to 14 says, Brethren, I count it not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching, reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark of the price of the high calling on of God in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Stop waiting. Take a little step each day. No matter how little, just take a little step each day. Towards becoming great. With a faith as a monster seed. That you are a Christian and on a journey to greatness does not mean that you won't encounter hurdles. So no matter what, do what? Keep looking forward. Oh, this thing happened today. I look forward. Great things are coming. This one happened today. I look forward. Great things are, hap- are coming. This other one happened. I don't care. I look forward. Great things are coming. How many of us will look forward? In your academics, will you look forward? In business, will you look forward? In family, will you look forward? Finally, the book of Job chapter 22. Job chapter 2, 9 to 10. His wife said to him, Are you still maintaining your integrity? Cause God and die. He replied, You are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? In all this, Job did not sin in what he said. He did not cause God. God treasures you when you don't allow challenges to bring you down. God does what? He treasures you when you don't allow challenges to bring you down. Despite what you are going through, look to God and do what else? Look within and do what else? Look forward. Look to God. Look within. Look forward. Look to God. Look within and look forward. And if you want to forget everything here, don't forget this one. I said your spirit is not your human spirit. As long as you have accepted Jesus, the spirit in you is Christ. What happened is that the spirit of man died at the garden of Eden. God cursed that spirit. It died. So when you accepted Jesus, there was a change in a regeneration. That spirit left. So it's the spirit of Christ that is in you. Forget what this face looks like. Forget what this hand looks like. Forget what the body does. Forget what the head thinks. What is bigger than what you are seeing now is the spirit man that is Jesus. Live with that consciousness that it is Jesus that is moving. That is Jesus that is saying this. Red Sea, dry. Jesus is saying, let there be money. Let there be health. Let there be this. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. We believe you were blessed with today's episode of Pure Gospel Moment. For prayers, testimonies, or further inquiries, you can reach Mac Miracle on plus 234-812-328-8593. That is plus 234-812-328-8593. God bless you real good.